There's only a bird in a gilded cage, a beautiful sight to see. My opinion on vegans. Um, I think it's a load of my arse, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, because back years and years ago, I'm sure a lot of people used to eat me, you know? But I just don't believe in vegans, so I just think it's a load of my arse. She's only a bird. She's only a bird in a gilded cage. A beautiful sight, a beautiful sight, a beautiful sight, a beautiful sight to see. I said a beautiful sight to see. You may think that she's happy and free from all care. She's not the Please welcome Johnson. And I, I only went vegan about two years ago because I met my girlfriend and she was vegan, I was vegetarian. And I lived in a place called Harwich in Essex. If you don't know it, you've never been there, don't go. And she lived in Norwich in Norfolk. And we had a conversation about where we were going to live together. And she won and I now live in Norwich. But part of the deal was I had to go vegan. I was kind of a little bit cautious, and then I realised, actually, you know what, I like sex more than cheese. <laughs> I actually had this argument with a family member recently who said that if we didn't breed cows to kill them, cows wouldn't exist, which is absolute cobblers. They would exist in some form, they just wouldn't exist in industrialised agriculture. And if you have compassion for a cat, if you have compassion for your dog, if you love your rabbit you can't say that that life is worth more than the cow or sheep in a field it doesn't equate it's just a complete conditioning uh, when we were kids that's what we're told you can eat chickens you can eat pigs don't eat dogs don't eat cats they're our friends they aren't pigs have been proved to be more intelligent than dogs so there is absolutely no reason to to eat a pig and not eat a dog, it's just conditioning. And obviously your parents were told that, they'll tell you that, you'll tell your kids that, and until somebody turns around and says, you're wrong, you know, people are just gonna keep on doing what they've always done. There's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference between house pets and then animals that are, are bred for beef, lamb, chicken. There's a difference between them than what there is between a house dog, a house pet, a dog, a cat, let's say, than what there is between a cow. A cow is bred for beef. That's the main purpose of having cows. Like a lot of farmers will have cows for beef. You know, that's how they make their profits. That's how they make their money, is beef. I came into farming really through my family history. Um, my father's a farmer, my father's father was a farmer, and my mum is a, from a farming family as well. Um, I didn't, it wasn't my intention to get into farming. I went to university after school, got a degree, came back, started working on the farm, and I've been here ever since. Um, there's a connection in, in between domestic, animal, domestic pets and farm animals, in fact, that they are animals, living creatures. But I think that um, there is a difference between them being pets and um, animals uh, for um, farming purposes. For example, we keep uh, dog, uh, working dogs on our sheep dogs, and they're there to, to work and to help us manage the flocks. Um, but we don't keep them as domestic pets. They, you know, but uh, obviously, they have the best care and attention, and they're, they're, uh, they're good company. But um, and obviously, with other animals such as the sheep and the cattle then there's no way we keep the numbers that we do uh, for domestic purposes. I don't think there's anything you can really say to the companies that are already making money from killing animals like abattoirs and butchers because that's their business model and that's what they've been brought up to believe and it's what they've been, they've based their whole business on. I think what I would say to the people who support that industry by eating meat is that the more of us who change, the more of us who move away from eating meat and move to veganism, they're gonna to have to change their model. And maybe someday the avatars will switch to just harvesting kale. I can't see it going to just 
producing crops and fruit. Um, at the end of, but at the end of the day, it's a supply and demand uh, business. We don't, um, as long as there's a supply for meat, I'm sure that um, there will be, uh, farmers will keep on uh, producing animals for that purpose. But uh, if one day the market disappears, then everyone will have to adapt to that. Beef, beef, yeah, I love a big, big, big juicy beef, blood and all coming out of it, yeah. I love it, yeah. Um, chicken, I love chicken, turkey, love fish. Don't like, don't like bacon, not a big fan of bacon, no. No, but beef, yeah, beef, big juicy, bloody steak, yeah. <laughs> Quite a few farmers now, you see on Facebook, you know, beef farmers who have decided to turn their farm into a sanctuary. It can be done. It's just all about seeing the bigger picture. Uh, you know, farmers, yes, they might have farmed uh, cows their whole lives, but that doesn't mean they can't farm something else or even do something else. You know, there are other things to do and they have the land. That's the important, that's the important part. It's people there that are just latching on to things. I, I don't even know, like, um, I just, I don't believe in it, like, I just think people, think people follow a culture and that's what, what they do is just follow a culture and they're just set on it, like, you know? Slavery. At the time, it was normal, it was fine, uh, people did it, people liked it, um, but, I, you know, it's, it's the same with animals, like, we keep them in horrible conditions and we, we breed them just so we can kill them and eat them. I think one day that is going to be seen by everybody to be morally horrendous. Um, it's just going to take some time. We've already had the World Health Organization point out that eating meat is the same as smoking. So people are going to become more aware. Now I know the meat industry did a very good PR campaign against that, but that news is still out there and it's becoming more relevant. And I think as more and more people become aware of the planet, become aware of their impact on it, I think you're going to see it growing from some niche little movement that some couple of hairy people in the corner kind of do to at the moment it's cool which is brilliant because I've never been cool before but it will become mainstream in the next five years. I don't think they're making a difference. There's still, like, there's farmers out there still gonna breed cows, still gonna send them to the slaughterhouse. Still, do you know what I mean? Like, you... I don't know if it would reach the masses. It's, um, I think it is becoming more popular. And it's, like I said, it's a lifestyle choice. If it was, um, uh, if people thought it was the best thing for them and their family, or perhaps, uh, for example, for some reason um, meat's got massively expensive, then people might adopt that lifestyle. But um, I can't see that happening in the near future.